Hello everyone, this is part 2C, the attack on Christianity, part 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 11, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproach, in necessity, in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. 11. I am become a fool in glory. Ye have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you. For in nothing am I behind the very cheapest apostles, though I be nothing. Though I be nothing. In the aftermath of the terrorist bombing in the subways of Russia, ISIS said they are declaring war on the cross, referring to the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Europe, we see the war raging against our Christian brothers and sisters in arms defending the name of God through faith in Jesus Christ as Christians of the faith. We see martyrs. We see suicide bombers and execution-style murders in blatant defiance of the Word of God as they attack us, raging war on the Christians who believe in the name of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. We see those who oppose law and order and seek to murder our unborn children and allowing the enemy in our country with open borders, welcoming them into our great country as refugees. We see the politics of the U.S. today and changes to laws that permitted and encouraged the murder of our innocent children to sell their body parts for research in the name of being politically correct and financial gain. Quoting health and prenatal care for those who need it while their actions speak of a different truth to be known in due season. They speak of one lie after another while in truth or encouraging them to murder their own unborn children. We see the corruption of politicians of times past who now with all hypocrisy and accusations and condemnations of others when they themselves have sin in their life past and present and refusing to accept the incoming administration but would rather make false accusations and condemnation of the words towards them bringing in division of nations rather than unity of the spirit. We fight against ISIS as they try to destroy us with terrorist attacks on the innocent women and children to bring fear among us but they know not of our truths in the name of Jesus Christ for we have not a spirit of fear. We see our government in the past who tried to open up the privacy of our women and children when they used the restroom, allowing the perverted and adulterous generation open access to terrorize our family and children without laws to protect the innocent women and children. We see the attack on the innocent special needs children and a teacher as those who walk in rage and hatred of others lash out to her and murder those who cannot defend themselves. We see the world today with Syria using chemical warfare on the women and children murdering thousands in the name of a war of violence and destruction. We see the atrocities committed there on the families of the innocent people who desperately seek for peace in a war-torn country. We see North Korea flexing its muscles in defiance of the world, trying to bring fear and panic to the world. They threaten the U.S with nuclear bombs, accusing and being accused of those who hate the United States and Israel. We see Iran and terrorist organizations condemning Israel and the United States, seeking nuclear weapons of mass destruction to strike at Israel and the United States. Their rhetoric and proclamations of destructions to all those who oppose their way of life and the religion they practice of condemnation and judgments on others while their actions in their life testify them in spirit and in the truth. I will not stand idly by and watch them rape and murder our wives and children, my brothers and sisters, in the name of laws that are contrary to the Word of God. I want to quote Ephesians 
6.12 calls I know the truth in the world today. Ephesians 6.12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I say to all who have ears to hear, I will not fear what the carnal man can do to me, for I serve God, and it is He who fights for me. Philippians 1.28 says, And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. I call upon all Christians who hear this word to stand for those who cannot stand for themselves. I say to you, mount up, ye warriors of faith and justice. I call all those to the front lines of the battle, arming yourselves with the weapons of spiritual warfare, defending a kingdom of love and mercy to an everlasting God of salvation through His Son, Jesus Christ. To His glory of praise. To His glory praise. In my weakest moments is my strength and the Lord revealed. As my words speak of all my truths, declare to all in the Spirit the love and hope I have in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare it to you and to the world this day and say unto all who hear me, mount up, putting on the full armor of God, mounting the workhorse of your faith and love, and declaring with words spoken your faith and hope in Jesus Christ and the salvation promised to us who believe. It is time to stand in numbers, saying with one voice, we are at war, and we war in repentance, faith, love, and it is God we fight for, and His holy word spoken to us. Come fight with me, brothers and sisters. Fight with me in love and mercy to others, defending those who are oppressed and persecuted. Fight with me in hope. Fight with me in forgiveness to others for what they've done to you. I say unto all those who fight with me for the gospel of peace, be strong, be courageous, be strengthened. Just believe. For you are not alone. Our Lord God is with us and fights for us. I began to conclude this with Jude 1.9 concerning what is happening in the world today. Jude 1.9 says, Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Do us not bring against him a relevant accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. I bring no relevant accusations or accusals to you or to anyone or nation. I say unto all those who oppose and fight against our Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel of peace, the Lord rebuked you. He rebuked you in the name of Jesus Christ. The fear you tried to send to others will now follow you. For I quote Joshua 24, 12, which says, And I sent the hornet before you, which drove them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword, nor with thy oath. I want to conclude this message with 1 Peter 2, 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. You are called out of darkness into His marvelous light, that you should show forth the praises of Him who called you. Matthew 5, 14, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Matthew eleven thirty. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. These are words that Jesus spoke. My burden is light. The burden of the Lord is the light that you refuse to let shine forth in praises of Him who has called you out of the darkness. Jesus said His burden is light. And ye are the light of the world. Let your light shine as a candle on a candlestick for all to see. And I want to conclude this with Proverbs 29, 18, which says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. It's praise God through Jesus Christ and to his glory and praise. Much love to everyone. Amen.